Hello, in this video I'll show you how you can use the FIGAF tool to take one of your CPI agents and create a Git repository for it. So here we have one uh, CPI agent we have connected and obviously it requires you have installed the tool either on BTP or your local system, connected it to either a Cloud Foundry or Neo CPI agent and that you have performed the test and it is able to show these values. So once you have done that, you can go to your Git project and here we can create a new repository. Daniel trial. It is, should be private always. We don't need any of these things, so that's okay. So now we have created a Git repository here and we can take this value and go to the FIGAF tool. Here we would select enable git integration the repository url here this is fine uh, you need sometimes to make some different path to these to work um, so we'll add your ert sync your username and then we need a credential for this and the best way to do that is to go to your git settings scroll down to developer settings personal access token and create a new one that is called you need to log in set an expiration of this and it needs repo access and we generate this key and we got it here so now we can go back here to our git repository we can set this we can add all of these attributes which makes it a little easier to manage because then all of these would be managed automatically we press save so now we have created this and we can see we get this icon now if we press click on create here it will synchronize all of the iflows and it will start filling in the uh, git repository and if you have a large uh, system it would obviously take quite a while for it to find and synchronize all of these iflows that exists we create it we can see now that we have added some data to our figaf sync branch which is all good and we can see we got this git ignore all of these different templates that we would need for us to work in this environment so now we can go here, we can uh, open our uh, tool to handle these things. So I'm using IntelliJ. Uh, I think it has really a lot of options to make something like this possible. And what we do here is uh, create a new project from version control. We put in our Git URL. It will say this is the, the repository and it will start downloading this uh, this window terminate so now it starts to import all of the the different artifacts that is needed for this to work uh, yeah <laughs> um, so one thing we need to make sure is here if we edit this project Um, the project configuration thing here we have. So if you want to see the settings, go to settings when you have the project. Here we have a uh, setting here for Gradle. It needs a Java 8 version. You can also add a new one uh, if you want to add some of the other ones. But you need a Java 8 for this to work. Then we will create a new folder called lib. New folder. Directory. Lips. And in this one we will find... In this folder we can see here we got these uh, hand on demand cloud integration. We have these two files. We need to accept this. Uh, license 
Uh, these are now in a Maven repository, which means that eventually we would be able to move these into our code uh, project. And then we find them in our download folder. We got these two here. And obviously, as you can see, I have a couple of versions of these. We will paste them in here, refactor it. Um, because now we have, we need to use these uh, for our processing. I think as default these are used, otherwise you can go in and add as library. That means that they will be expanded and you can see the, the data of, of them here. Now we can see some of the other things we have here. We have a git ignore that will be updated by the tool. We have a build gradle. And this one contains information about the plugins and what are the different actions uh, we want to use here. Do we want to wait for startup? Do we want to uh, set as a new version once we upload, etc. So there's a lot of uh, setup configuration that's done in here and we can add different scenarios to it. It comes with an error. Uh, I guess we just need to build it. And here's the template. It also comes with a uh, ERT.gradle. With this one, we need to make a modification of. So we copy this to just call it gradle.properties. And here we have the username and password. We need to insert those into the tool. Um, and once we have done that, we should be able to pull all of these things. Well, let me just pause this. So now I've inserted these uh, passwords. And we can go here to the build gradle. We can click on here. And this should start the build process and ensure we have all the relevant data. And obviously this can take a little while because it will download the plugins and ensure everything is up to date. Um, once this is done, we have a gradle window up here. Uh, we can expand. Otherwise, I guess this could be under the window edit tabs uh, on the view where you would diff have some of these different uh, patterns and uh, Gradle window that you can enable here. So now this has been done and we can see here in this main file, I think we should see this message implementation is complaining that we need to implement to a couple of methods uh, hopefully in the next release this will also be be added so you do not need to make these but this is just our method implementation that we've tried to implement that works as smoothly as the original one but obviously we cannot guarantee that all methods are identical uh, and there can be some challenges with setting up uh, this up but the main reason we added this is if you create test cases, you would be able to run this uh, directly from here. One of the things we now can see here is we, after we have run the, the build of the Gradle, we got the different plugins here. So if we have a folder here called EDI, we can see we have one here, task. We have a that's called uh, get customers bootcamp. We can see this is an iFlow. We have process direct testing. We have values. All of these are then placed in here. And that means if we go to this uh, folder, we can see all the artifacts that we have here. As a part of this, we can see these have been marked as Groovy scripts. And if we select here upload, it will then try to build this as an archive, connect to the CPI system, upload the data uh, to it. And then once we've done that, we can create a deploy that will then check the iFlow and deploy it. Um, and this can obviously take a little while. Uh, we can see here that the, so what has failed? deployment of this has failed there yeah, maybe there's some something wrong with this iflow at the current point that makes we 
uh, say we need to go in and check what is actually going on here. Um, so you need to check the CPI system about what why the site flow fails. You can also see your value mappings that exist here or um, where you have the same option. Uh, so message mappings and script collections will also be here. And one of the cool things is that you can search for any text obviously in here but also in the project repository here so you have here uh, find in path so if you find in path which places we have these different kind of uh, information makes it really easy to go around and figure out what is actually possible what you have used of scripts in different places and start reusing this and i hope this has been helpful and you can see how you can use this in your own uh, processing. So thanks for watching.